Registered Phenomena Code 153 Object Class Alpha White Neutralized Hazard Types Not Applicable Containment Protocols Any areas affected by RPC-153 are to be cordoned off to the public and private property signs placed around the anomaly. Any instances of RPC-153-1 are to be stored in Storage Unit 27. Access code requests are to be placed in Dr. DeFresco's inbox. RPC-153-1 is a non-anomalous M18 smoke grenade which, presumably, contained RPC-153. The grenade's interior had been slightly modified from standard issue counterparts. The inside coating is composed of unknown composite metal and residue, the fuse alongside any evidence of it ever being used or missing, indicating that RPC-153-1 was used merely as a means of transportation rather than activation. The main anomaly, RPC-153, is contained within modified M18 smoke grenades the components of which are being tested for potential use by the Authority. RPC-153 refers to the visual anomaly that permanently occupies a 3-meter cubed area around RPC-153-1 after its activation release. RPC-153 refers to a visual anomaly where it is impossible for any light on the visible spectrum to exist. Testing shows that any other frequencies on the electromagnetic spectrum can be observed inside the area of effect, which offers some insight into RPC-153's anomalous properties. Suggesting Intended Infantry Use Subjects report mild disorientation upon entry, and in rare cases, at the site of the anomaly. Subsequent testing has shown that RPC-153 will develop various properties, the properties being directly correlated to the amount of light projected within RPC-153. At 4,000 lumens, random energy discharges form in the shape of UV lightning, although the most drastic changes occurred over lumens, where the chemical composition of the gases within the area are causing a disintegration of all non-solid matter inside. 153A RPC-153 was first contained as an Alpha White class object. The Authority was unaware of RPC-153-1's existence until a CSD came upon it during initial testing of the anomaly's properties. The grenade was estimated to be at its exact epicenter, designating it as the point of origin. See Test Log 153-1 Test Log 153-1 Subject CSD-3567 Procedure CSD-3567 is to explore RPC-153 and determine if any additional anomalous phenomena are present with the oversight of Dr. DeFresco. CSD-3567 is equipped with a microphone, camera, and flashlight. Begin Log Enter the room. Are you sure? It's dark as all in there, and the flashlight isn't doing anything. Did you guys give me a toy? No, we didn't. Now tell me if you feel different from normal. Uh, I'm dizzy. Also a bit freaked out to be a, a loud thud is heard, followed by the sound of something rolling. I slipped on something. Elaborate. It's round, like a bottle. What do you want me to do? Recover it. Exit the room and stand by. I think I know where it went, but I can't see anything. End log. Closing statement. Subject waited outside of the anomaly holding RPC-153-1. Multiple screenings were conducted by research and containment staff. Results. Subject recovered RPC-153-1, as it was deemed safe by on-site personnel. Initial inspection yielded no other significant results. In-depth analysis pending. Note, subject experienced difficulty exiting the anomaly. In particular, he was disoriented and anxious suspected to be secondary properties of RPC-153, deemed safe for interaction with research staff within reasonable margins. Test Log 153-2 Procedure High-power illumination is to be projected inside RPC-153 to determine the possibility of a breakthrough by fascicles of light. Results. Spectrographic imaging 
indicates random discharges of UV light. Testing with higher lumen equipment approved. Procedure Same as the previous test. Illumination hardware has been upgraded. Results All equipment from inside the anomaly stopped sending data to researchers outside. Test momentarily stopped. A brief investigation determined that all equipment inside has disappeared. Note, subsequent analysis revealed no trace of any solid matter inside, supporting the ongoing theory that the interaction between and high amounts of energy causes the instantaneous rupture of any chemical bonds within solid materials. Requesting permission to reverse engineer the object, it could definitely be useful to agents in the field once we remove its permanent factor. As we suspect, it was its intended use anyways. Dr. DeFresco Permission granted, although your main priority is finding a way to scrub the things out of the air. Site Director <laughs> <laughs>